Toronto Raptors fall short to the Charlotte Hornets. The first game out of the All-Star break, they fall 125-93. to Welcome to Raptors Nightcap. I'm Sherman Hamilton. I'm joined by Leo Routens, Paul Jones, and, and Jack Armstrong. And Jack, we'll start with you. As a coach, Jack, I mean, you look at a game like this and you see your team is flat. They, they just don't have it. I mean, how do you work your way through it? Nick tried to call some timeouts early to get his team to figure some things out. They just didn't have it. What do you do in a situation like that? You know, it's interesting. You look at the, the last game uh, before the break uh, against Minnesota, and they were phenomenal. And tonight, you know, as we know, those game, the game before the break, the game after the break, and they looked like a team that didn't have the same urgency as their opponent. Uh, I, th- I give Charlotte a lot of credit. They came out, mm-hmm. you know, they had, they've been really struggling going into the break. And they came out with a great sense of urgency and force. And unfortunately, Toronto didn't meet it tonight. Um, I mean, it's one thing to not be able to score, but then to see the opposing team just get it going offensively. I mean, Scary Terry was phenomenal, but we'll just look at this game in general. They just didn't have it offensively. And it just seemed like their defense couldn't answer the call either. No, you're absolutely right. I mean, across the board, it was just a bad game. And, you know, I mentioned this during the broadcast that, you know, the break can come at an opportune or inopportune time for, for teams. If you think about the Raptors, you know, they were rolling, feeling good. Yeah, you want to break physically, but, you know, they're locked in. They were playing good basketball, right? So a break, the all-star break didn't come at a great time for them that, in that respect. You look at Charlotte, I mean, they're struggling, you know, winning yeah. one of the last nine games. So you want to break. You want to get the hell away from each other. You want to you want to just forget about everything. So the break, I think, really worked in Charlotte's favor. They were able to get away, come back, regroup a little bit, and, and they just looked like a team that was refreshed and, and ready for a fresh start, whereas the Raptors looked like a team that was trying to figure out how to get back what they had. Um, and obviously they never got it back. It was just one of those games where they were just a step slow on everything they tried to do. Right. No question about it. And, and the Raptors had a, a busy schedule going into the break. Coming out of the break, Jonesy, they have a busy schedule as well. But yeah. sometimes a good thing about a busy schedule is you get to get back at it right after a tough loss and a bad loss like this. And how important is that coming out of the break to get another game under your belt as quickly as possible just to kind of get some kind of better feeling about yourselves? I, I think you're right, Sherman. And like Leo and Jack said, the good thing is there's a game the, the next night. And, uh, you know, you kind of wash it off when you get out of the shower. You don't dwell on it. And, you know, Leo and I said this at one point. If you're Atlanta, you're thinking, oh, man, they're coming in here after being beaten that badly, not playing well. They're going to be looking for redemption. I, th- I think it's important to, to ha- you know, you don't want to jam the schedule in. But when you have this many games in this short a time period, it may jumpstart you. It, it may force you to get things going. And you may find your rhythm quicker because of the number of games. I mean, you think about it, uh, a couple of games from now, Tuesday night, on the second night of the back-to-back against Brooklyn, they're going to be coming home to a full arena for the first right. time in who knows how long. So, um, yeah, it's not it's not ideal to have all the games, but – you know, you can find a silver lining in it in that you're, you're going to have these games to work yourself back into shape. I'm really interested, Sherm, to see how they bounce back tomorrow night. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Me too. This team has been a good bounce back team. So the expectation is that they will get after it. Now, Jack, obviously, in a game like this, you try to throw away as much as you can. But there was a bright spot in Scotty Barnes. I mean, he was efficient from the floor, 13 of 18 for 28 points in this game. But how how important was it for Scotty? And no disrespect to Scotty, but it was a difficult All Star weekend for him. So to see him come out and do what he did tonight, it's got to be a positive moving forward. I, I would agree, Sherm. Uh, you know, unfortunately, I couldn't pick up the audio uh, of Jonesy and Leo. We had technical problems here in Charlotte, so I literally stood about twenty feet from the Raptors bench. And you know, when I stand that close, I'm really caught up in in body language and interactions and how the team kind of really pays attention to each other and being cued into what's going on. I was super impressed, uh, you know, watching Scotty Barnes interact with teammates and coaches, uh, watching him play. Uh, he's a, he's a five-star talent. I mean, he really is, uh, you know, and then to watch him come off the court, there was a, a time where he came off the court 
and he was absolutely exhausted and he just had his head back and he was watching the game up on the, on the TV screen. He was so exhausted. He laid it out there. I tell you what, he's really, he's, he's crafty around the basket. Yes. He's got sweet touch. He uses the window. Nice. Uh, he's got good vision. Uh, he's, he really, really, obviously it was his career high tonight. Uh, but I, I think having a little bit of a break, you know, when you look at, and it kind of explains what, what happened with OG Ananobi now that we know his injury, OG struggled the last few games before the break, and so did Scotty. And now to watch Scotty Barnes, uh, his first game out of the break, he came out really with a lot of pop. And uh, if you can get that on a more consistent basis down the stretch of the season, uh, he's going to be an even bigger figure for their team. Uh, Leo Jack touched on OG Ananobi and his, his fracture to the, the finger on the right hand, obviously a shooting hand. And I'm sure all of us have experienced those finger jam, finger fractures while playing. But, I mean, that's a, that's a tough blow to figure that OG potentially could miss some more games with this injury. It's, it's not something that you want OG to go through because it seems like he's been plagued with having something happen almost every season. It's just – it's just hard to deal with when you see how good he's been playing for the Raptors. Yeah, I mean, you, you feel bad for him, right? Because it just seems that every time that he's just in a good flow, good groove, something comes and, and you know, and it does set him back. Uh, and he's not an easy guy for this team to replace because right. it's very, you know, when you have a guy that can guard literally every position on the floor at the same time, knock down threes, score around the basket, and give you the offense, and just be a good complimentary guy to the players on the floor because he knows them so well, um, not easy to replace. So, And Jonesy, we, I mean, all of us on this screen can, can obviously agree. Thaddeus Young is a player we've all admired for quite some time. But Jonesy, when you look at Thaddeus Young getting his opportunities, when you watch him play, you don't look at the right column of the stat sheet to figure out his impact. Yeah, and and for did. those people that don't really understand that, just give us, uh, us an idea of Thaddeus Young getting more minutes, getting some more run, getting acclimated, what it means to the Raptors. Well, I think the key word that you said, Sherm, is getting acclimated. He's got to learn to play with these guys. He's coming in midseason. Uh, there's no training camp. There's no, uh, there's no time to figure it out through practice. At this point in the season, you're not practicing very much, especially when in this stretch where you have six games in eight nights. So, right. um, you know, getting out on the floor – with uh, with the guys that he's going to be playing a lot with. I mean, Nick Nurse is going, you know, maybe eight, nine deep. So even in a blowout, it's important for him to get on the floor and uh, learn what to do around Boucher, learn where he likes the ball, uh, you know, learn the tendencies of a, of, a, of a precious Achua, talk with Fred Van Vliet, know where to space the floor for Pascal Siakam. All those things are important. And once he settles in, and you're starting to see it now, uh, you, you saw a couple of hoops today where, uh, you know, he, he, he kind of cuts and gets the ball on the wing and uh, looks for his opportunity. And then once he gets into the lane or starts to create something, he's looking for teammates. Yeah, no question about it. He's one of those guys who you can plug into a situation. He's not going to pull anything away from anybody. But, Jack, I mean, it was a difficult game overall. But did you see anything from that fourth quarter unit? I mean, there's no garbage time, right? So – if you're Nick Nurse, you're still looking for what you can get out of that group. Well, they did a lot of, you know, did a lot of stunting and trapping, showed a little one three one, uh, mixed things up a little bit. And I, I think he, you know, is trying to kind of figure out maybe different personnel groups that he can use that defense uh, with a little bit. So, uh, so to me, and that's not only a defense you can use when you're losing, you can use that just coming out of a timeout for one possession. Uh, you know, in a, in a big game, a playoff game, whatever it may be. So I think he's always kind of working on stuff like that. So to me, I thought they utilized that time uh, to their advantage and got a few nice possessions defensively out of it. And big shout out to Jonesy today. A beautiful article in the Toronto Star. If folks haven't read it yet. They should read it. And big shout out to Matty D. Let's hope he's uh, back at it pretty soon. Absolutely. And Leo, I'm shouting you out just because Jack didn't. But Leo, the next, game, <laughs> the next game is against Atlanta. What do you want to see the Raptors change or, or make adjustments to? I mean, it wasn't a good game tonight, but what would you like to see them address first? Effort. I mean, go out and play. Go out and play with, 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 uh, with aggression. Go out and play with passion. Go out and play with speed. 
they didn't have it. They were a step slow on everything uh, in this game against Charlotte. So they got to go out against Atlanta and take the game to them. Uh, you know, Atlanta's got shooters, they got size, they do, they got a lot of different things on the floor. So you really got to be in tune at the defensive end. And offensively, uh, you want to take the game to the Atlanta Hawks, force them to defend. That means you got to rebound, you got to get out in transition. Uh, and, and that's another thing, the rebounding. I mean, Raptors did not do a good job. They didn't finish defensive possessions. Uh, they were given up, especially early in the game, which kind of set the tone. So you just want to, you want to show up and be yourself, uh, which they definitely were not tonight. Hey, big yeah, shout good. out to big shout out to Leo. Big shout out to Sharon. We got everybody coming. <laughs> See what happened? You put pressure on people, Leo. There you go. There what you about go. you? <laughs> hey, 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 also, what do you want to see from from the Raptors against Atlanta on exa- Saturday? Exactly, exactly what Leo talked about. We've seen losses from this team before, <laughs> but we haven't seen losses the way we saw them tonight. Right? Like right, they're right. they're normally, as you like to say, Sherm, they're normally in the fight and and scrapping and forcing the other team to work. It just felt like Charlotte got whatever they wanted whenever they wanted tonight, and Toronto didn't put up the same kind of resistance. They tried, and they tried to kickstart, and it never got going. But rather than continuing or trying to force that, they just kind of – they just kind of at, at one point, they just kind of said, okay, well, we're just going to turn the page tonight. And that's not something that they do regularly. I expect them to come out. I, I said this on the broadcast. Somewhere Nate McMillan at the Atlanta Hawks are looking at that score going, Oh my God. Now they're going to come in yeah. here and, and try to jump all over us tomorrow night. And I fully expect that to happen. It may not be a win, but it's not going to be, you know, it's, it's not going to be a 32 point blowout. Absolutely. 10, 10, 62. This is one of the 10 games That's that you're it. not going to win no matter what. All right, guys. Good job. Thanks a lot. We're going to stop right there. Next up for the Raptors, they face the Atlanta Hawks on Saturday night at 7 30 PM. We'll see you then. <laughs>